into this. So yeah, this is a little bit weird. I, uh, an online, uh, business meeting. Um, I think us, uh, yeah, no chime there. Um, I think like, you know, we, along with everyone else were originally said, Oh, two weeks, we're going to be back to normal. And then it's four weeks. And then, well, here we are in July. Um, so we're excited to give you an update. Um, I put some slides together just to hopefully keep flow of thought, um, keep things organized and uh, succinct for everybody. And there'll be a couple of transitions and I'll definitely check for uh, questions, comments um, in those pieces and do the best we can to answer all of those. So let's, uh, let's go to screen share. And if I click the right one, um, it should. Okay. Can everyone see that? Just raise your hand if you can see that. I just want to make sure some people, oh, yeah, we got some hands raised. Sweet. Okay. Awesome. So I'm going to assume everybody else can see if you can't just, you know, say something. Um, so July, uh, 2020 It's crazy. We're already here. Uh, excited to see this. I uh, just wanted to start with review of the last couple of months. Um, so obviously the dominating factor, uh, the dominating, uh, piece this last couple of months, um, has been Corona. Um, so it's provided a lot of opportunities. Uh, a lot of these opportunities that come in regards to division. Um, so if you haven't noticed, there's uh, quite a few people of different, uh, opinions out there on on treatment and severity and prevention um politics have gotten involved in it which is always exciting uh, on the church side of things you can't tell it's quite a bit of sarcasm there um also we've entered this and if you know are even in the middle of it with different health conditions and certainly um that weighs into uh i think a lot of our opinions on things and our factors on how we look at it we all have different we also have different ages um, and even different occupations in the midst of this. I mean, we've got those who are students. Um, we've got those who are retired. Uh, we've have some that their work has been radically impacted. Um, we've some that the job has continued on the same, but it's gone home. And that brings with it a lot of inefficiencies, a lot of changes. Um, so in the midst of, in the midst of everything going on, there's just been plenty of opportunity for us to, um, to divide, to, to only look at our perspective, to only look at our side. And um, we've seen that certainly as a culture. And it's been a um, concern, and I've seen the grace of God so manifest in this, but it's certainly been a concern for the church that in the midst of all this, that we would mirror society uh, rather than uh, mirroring ourselves as followers of Jesus. And so certainly the opportunities for division have uh, been abundant in this. Uh, it's also been a time of transition. Uh, the coronavirus has caused a lot of transition. So we've seen some people that are, are relocating or have relocated. Um, you know, certainly uh, the Johnsons come to mind there. Um, you mostly know the Andersons, uh, Ken and Catherine Anderson are going to be moving to New Hampshire to be closer to family and uh, help out with some uh, medical pieces there. Um, and then we've also had some additions to the church, which has been really, uh, or decisions, sorry, decisions. I missed that one. Um, Certainly during this process, uh, we've seen a lot of people um, making decisions. And I don't know if this has been your experience, but typically if uh, I'm at making decisions under pressure, it doesn't always go well. Um, and unfortunately, we've seen a lot of people in high pressure situations. Um, it's hard to say that the decisions themselves are bad or good um, if they're not sin, but I'd say the process for making the decisions have been very concerning uh, as a pastor. Um, but then we've also seen some God do some amazing things. We've seen additions to the church. Uh, you know, it seems like every week we have both new, pe you know, new people in the hybrid service, whether that's in the parking lot um, or online. And we've seen that just regularly occur. And that has been so exciting. Uh, we had partnership class uh, last week or the week before. I'm sorry, I'm losing uh, track of uh, Sundays a little bit. And we had seven uh, new people that have um, all started you know, participating in the church family just since um, Corona hit. So they've actually not been inside the building in any regular basis. So, and that was, we could have added another six or eight more to that. We've kept the group small um, just to keep everything safe for everybody. But uh, it's been exciting to see God do a lot of great things and continue to, to build his church in the midst of that. Um, Let's see. Well, there we go. Um, also, the concerns, you know, have been abundant in all this time. Um, there's definitely health concerns. I and mean, that's kind of what kicked this whole uh, piece off is the concerns for health and well-being and and uh, life itself. Um, 
we also in the church have a lot of uh, people that have financial concerns um, or even if things are steady now, what are the long-term ramifications of shutting down an economy? Um, how does that look? How does it operate? And, uh, and I, I know some of these concerns for each one of us resonates more uh, clearly or more strongly than other ones. Um, but that's exactly the point as a church family, as individuals, some of these will uh, resonate more than others. And so there's concerns across the board um, with finances. Um, one that I'll, I've also seen that I think has you know, contributed to the, some of these uh, poor decision-making processes, a lot of people's like coping, coping mechanisms or recharging mechanisms, call, call them what you uh, want. Those have kind of disappeared or changed during this process. And so, um, you know, so for some people that's shopping, for some people that's traveling, eating out, working out at a gym, um, you know, a lot of, the, you know, going to see a movie on a regular basis, a lot of those pieces that we kind of use to monitor or keep, um, um, you know, ourselves mentally sane, a lot of those pieces have um, disappeared during this time. And as a result, um, we've seen a, just a radical escalation in uh, suicide, uh, divorce rates, addiction, abuse. Um, I, I won't go into all the stats, but the stats we're seeing out of you know, suicides um, in California, they're reporting um, almost in one month's time, all of 2019 suicide rates. Um, suicide rates are up. Um, the, the severity of the calls for the suicide hotlines are even up. Um, certainly we're seeing, you know, uh, divorce or, uh, fraction, fractured relationships or friendships even, which is all, those all, uh, certainly play a call, a uh, toll, um, addiction. Um, you know, some of these numbers are a little hard to get on the, the early side of things. Um, alcohol consumption's up, you know, I think 230% the last time I checked. So there's, there's some, um, some real, uh, concerns and some real hurt, even abuse, um, this is one of the ones that really concerns me the most because a lot of your mandated reporters, your teachers, um, your church uh, workers, your camp workers, um, they're not interacting as closely with kids right now. And so um, the, the self-reported abuse is up, uh, I think about 40% the last time I saw. But, um, you know, that's not, you know, that's only seeing what we can see. It's not seeing what we can see. So certainly this period of time has, uh, in some ways, maybe wreaked havoc on us as a society, and in other ways, revealed cracks and fissures and sin problems that were already there. Um, so certainly, this has been a, a challenging time. Uh, you know, some of us listening, it's been a really challenging time. You can relate to some of this. Uh, you've got friends and family um, that are in high-risk jobs um, that are uh, exposed to a lot of danger, and so it, it's really been a it's been a unique time um, for us. Uh, behind the scenes, um, or maybe not so behind the scenes, on the church side of things, the program programs have basically entirely changed. I mean, yes, we're having Sunday services. Um, we've started resuming some small groups. Some of them are uh, online. But a lot of the pieces that um, we look at that we're familiar with, um, those programs have changed, um, you know, radically. Or some of them have just stopped at this point in time or for the time being. Um, connection looks different. You know, we're used to having certain routines and patterns of getting together with friends or church family. And we've seen uh, those pieces change um, somewhere in some dramatic ways. Um, there's also been a lot of counseling, and I certainly can't and won't go into detailed situations. Um, but behind the scenes, this is probably, and I, I don't want to speak for, uh, and I wouldn't speak for Pastor Justin, but I think for me in the last, you know, 10 to 12 years of ministry, uh, this has been the most intense period of ministry that I've seen. Um, and, you know, a lot of different situations and some we've seen God do some incredible things in. Uh, some we're waiting and expecting him to do incredible things in still. Um, but it's just been a lot of counseling, a lot of ministry um, with an intensity that I haven't seen to date. And I know that's not just myself and Pastor Justin, that's many of you as well. Um, but it's, it's, been, it's been busy. Um, uh, also the align process. So, uh, we started that going into this and, um, that hasn't, uh, I, I know, uh, you know, we haven't mentioned it as much as probably we should have. And some people say, Hey, do we forget all about that? Well, um, the reality is that kind of, uh, I'm excited to kind of share where we're at and where the next steps on that align process are. Um, but that's been in the works in the background and then also just the transitions. So a lot of transitions, um, during this uh, period of time. And uh, so we're excited um, about those. Um, 
or we're excited what God's going to do through those. Some, we're not excited about all of them, but we're excited what God's going to do through them. And uh, so it's been, um, that's kind of been the behind the scenes uh, a picture of the stuff that maybe haven't seen going on as much. Um, any questions about the review of the last couple of months before I jump to the next section? You know, chat, question. I'm looking at both of them here. Give a second to type. Okay, well, we'll keep rolling for now then. Okay. Um, beautiful. Um, so financial recap. Uh, God is, the, sh the short answer to this is God has been really good um, to us as a church family. Um, I'd say within about a week, week and a half of things shutting down, um, we really work to minimize expenses uh, as much as possible. Obviously, there's, there's quite a few building expenses and, and heat, but we stopped you know, ministry spending on things that we weren't sure if, when they would open up. Um, and so that allowed us to kind of uh, maintain fairly well. Um, if everyone, I think everyone can see this pretty well. Um, so we had so the budget number. So we are definitely under budget numbers. Um, you know, it's not been a, a radical um, shake off. I talked to some people that, you know, are looking at um, other churches and they're seeing half of what they were previously um, receiving for giving. And God has been just really gracious and really good um, to protect. And we've also, you can also see that while the, the tithing and designated or total giving is down from what we budgeted. And can, can people see my mouse? Can someone just let me know if you can see my mouse here? Is my mouse visible? Yes, it is. Or he's just saying hi. Richard likes me. Um, um, so while the uh, while you can see that the, the budgeted amount, we're, if you look at the total giving, we're down from the total giving for sure. Um, the expenses, um, what we had planned on for budget, um, went down as well. And so we've kept uh, those expenses down. The one high month right here was in May. Uh, you can also see that was the, uh, let's see, I think I'm correct on that. Um, so in May was where we gave out the, uh, that $10,000 to the food pantry or almost $10,000, um, which I think was just an amazing. And it, I hope you heard uh, Don's um, uh, testimony just there of the timeliness of that. And we didn't know that going into that. So you can see that month we were in the red um, on the second quarter. But um, overall, um, with the cutting expenses and just the faithful uh, giving of uh, God's people, um, we're in a really um, we're in a really healthy spot. We're in a really great spot. Um, I talked to others, and the concerns are real. Um, so we're very very grateful for all that have given and participated, and. Um, you know, as far as cash on hand, we're approximately $65,000. And then we have another $25,000 in escrow that the, uh, that should be coming available. Um, the bank, uh, made us put that away for a period of time when we took out the loan. And so that, uh, $25,000 is in escrow. Um, so we have about $90,000 available uh, at this time. So, um, those are the, the highlights there. Are there any, um, um, this is kind of a top down, but any specific questions? Uh, let's see. What are our major expenses right now? So facility, um, certainly is one of them. We've, we've, it's been nice to not have heating uh, season. Um, so that's, that's been a plus. Obviously landscaping is there. Um, it, you know, maybe didn't happen this last week for some unknown reason, but landscaping's there. Um, there is the, the staff piece as well. Um, we are running a little bit of air conditioning in the facility. Um, we've put some money and some of the funds. So, you know, while some things cut down, uh, certainly there's been some additional tech uh, pieces needed to cover um, and to make the hybrid service work. Um, we're, we're paying more for communion elements and things like that than we were. Um, so, uh, but we're, we're, we're grateful. I mean, you know, God has been so good. I mean, I can't, I'm excited to share this. So it's nice. Uh, you know, we weren't hiding um, something that was bad, but I think it's really amazing just to see God's provision uh, faithfully um, covering all those major expenses. Any, um, any other questions? Okay. We'll keep on going here. Okay. So the align process, if we've forgotten it, um, 
Oh, sorry. I just got one in. Uh, April ties look huge. Do you know why? Um, my memory on that is, let's go, let me go back here. Uh, April. So I think this was in the giving. Uh, can I get a confirmation from Rick or Mark on this? But my memory was that this was, we kind of, that, and we announced that food pantry drive right at the, um, right at the, the split of that uh, month. Um, and I think that affected April. But can I get an answer on that from either Mark or Rick? You can chat or text me. Any other financial questions while we're, Hang on, let me see if I can. Mark, are you there? Look at how complete. Yeah. Uh, Mark said nothing abnormal, just extra giving. <laughs> That's there you go. Nothing abnormal. Okay. Not, Mike, nothing abnormal, just extra giving. So, um, okay. Let me keep on going. So the line process, uh, just a review. It's been so, uh, it's been so long. It feels like an eternity ago and a very different world when we started this. Um, our goal with the start of the year was to really seek, um, God's face together as a church family and to see what opportunities were there, to see what things we were missing. Um, we started that with 21 days of prayer that still is just a wonderful way to start the year. I mean, you know, you think 2020 has been bad. Imagine if we hadn't had the 21 days of prayer. I mean, I mean, we would have been really hurting then. Uh, so we started with 21 days of prayer. We did a, a number of interviews. Um, I think 50, 60 people were interviewed uh, by Tom Thompson, um, put together a summary. Uh, and in fact, the, um, the week he was coming up to work on, um, you know, staffing and alignment there was the very first Sunday um, we shut down for Corona. And I say shut down. It's like we shut down in live in person, um, services. So, um, you know, the, during that, uh, piece, some of those, some of those observations some of those pieces, um, they didn't go away. Um, there's certainly a number of comments that were programmatic. And so some of those program pieces, there hasn't been a lot of work to do on that. Um, because some of those are, I mean, there's been behind the scenes work, but there hasn't been execution on it. But other pieces there have been execution on. Um, so big findings. Um, and this wasn't a surprise to to me and probably most others. But, um, you know, the church is it's continuing to grow. Um, you tend to outgrow things. Um, and so certainly one of those is the leadership structure um, was, you know, outgrown. And honestly, it was confusing even between uh, the leadership team and the ministry leads. And that was not um, intentional. Um, that was, um, but it was a great observation that was brought up. Um, and the other piece that, you know, Tom really highlighted and said that was highlighted by the interviews was just the general love for church and the desire to, to see it reach its full potential. And uh, that's, that's uh, so exciting um, to, to be a part of a church that, you know, sees the flaws, but wants to fix them so that we can, reach the maximum potential that God would have for us. And so um, I think that's a, that's a piece that he highlighted at the beginning and the end of the review. And um, so these are some of the pieces that were um, on our horizon to be working on. Um, the question is, how do we, how do we envision the future? What's the, what's the next steps? How do we envision the future? Um, certainly from my perspective, um, from the staff perspective, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just, it just sounds bad. I even hate to say this, but there's uncertainty if or when uh, programs will resume as normal. And the reality is, you know, I don't, I felt closer to the resuming of normal about three weeks in or a month in than I do right now. Um, and I'm not, that's not a, a fault to anyone. That's not a begrudging anyone. Um, you know, a lot of people in, in leadership and medical fields are doing their absolute best and, um, or, you know, but it's, it's hard to, um, you know, it's, it, I, there's not a timeline that seems to make sense. And we've even seen a number of States that have opened up, uh, have started rolling back, um, and becoming more restrictive. 
Um, so although we're thankful to be in Maine and Maine has been fairly healthy, um, it's, it's really challenging to know um, and it's uncertain to know uh, if or when the programs are going to zoom, zoom as normal. Uh, as a result of that, um, it seems unwise at this point to try to constantly guess and see what those next levels or what those next scenarios would be. Um, we, we don't know what they're going to be. Uh, we don't know what options will be in the future. Um, and so um, the major effort, I think, at this point in time isn't being put into revising some of the programs. So you say, well, what are we doing? Well, I think one of the things we can do and, and we're working on doing is clarifying the leadership structure. That's something that can happen uh, regardless if we're doing a hybrid service, regardless if we're online. Um, the, through the Align process and what, you know, as Tom listened to all the church people and then recommendations, um, a, a pastoral team uh, comprised of staff and lay uh, pastors and then an advisory council will be replacing the, the leadership team. Um, so as was recommended by Tom and met many, um, I think many of the interviews as well, um, that, you know, to, you know, being on, you know, the leadership team isn't mean de facto that they're going to be on the advisory council. There'll be some new people brought into those. Um, so that is, we're going to be work, we are working uh, currently to, uh, clarify the leadership structure. Obviously, um, the pastoral team, uh, the Johnsons will be, um, moving towards the middle slash end of August. Um, so there'll be, um, some, some new, uh, maybe some, some completely new faces, but, um, you know, the, the pastoral team will be a little bit different than when we started the align process. Um, but we're excited to, to broaden that, to clarify that. Um, some of you maybe, you know, your past church backgrounds are, you say a you know, group of elders, um, you know, basically, you know, same thing as pastoral team. Um, so we're excited to have that. And then advisory council, I mean, that accountability and that wisdom is, uh, so important and they will be, you know, heading up ministry opportunities as well in the advisory council. Um, so we're looking forward to rolling out, um, some of those pieces. Um, the, obviously when we're looking at the, the biblical qualifications in Titus and, uh, Timothy, um, are going to be guiding, um, and, uh, so important for both of those. Um, so what we're doing right now is we're starting to have uh, initial you know, interest and inquiry meetings. And then, um, from there, we're going to be looking at, you know, doctrine, philosophy, make sure there's some alignment there. And then those names will be coming before becoming official. They will be coming to the church family, um, for opportunity to, to, to privately comment, to ask questions. Um, you know, so that will be both, both the pastoral team and the advisory council. Um, we don't have a, a, a we're working as fast as we can on that in a way that also is um, not hasty, hopefully. Um, so we'd like that done tomorrow, but at the same time, it's a really important step and we want to make sure we're taking um, the time that it needs to make sure we get that right uh, by the grace of God. So, um, you know, I would, I would like to think within a, we want to do another update next month, you know, within a month, I would like to think we'd have some, some pieces to share, maybe even some names um, for the pastoral team and advisory council. But, um, you know, certainly we want to make sure that um, prayer is being taken on both parts and we have the time to go through the doctrinal piece and, and the philosophy and make sure there's alignment before we bring someone to you. Um, so we also uh, want to develop culture. Now, this is, this is, so we can't work on programs, but this is one of the pieces that I am um, very excited about. And um we, we all have a uh, different spiritual journeys and we all, I mean, we st it starts at salvation. It starts at the cross. So, you know, I'm not saying we start somewhere else there, but with that, sometimes we have different strengths. Some of us are stronger in some of the knowledge, the biblical knowledge piece or, or uh, the spiritual disciplines, prayer and Bible reading. Some of us are really good at serving. Um, others are really good at investing in others or ministering. And as a church family, it's our, it's our, um, responsibility and it's our opportunity and it's our obligation to make sure we're all pushing each other along down that path. And, and we do that through the you know, large group services. We do that through uh, the, you know, our life groups takes that a little bit more personal, but we're really praying over and looking at some ways that we can even make that um, even more personalized and um, almost maybe more of like a coach level where, you know, working with two or three people to allow us all to take whatever that next step for us would be. Um, in uh, growing with God. And so when we, when the church was started, uh, I don't know, almost 10 years ago now, um, the, I'm dating myself. Um, 
the one of the things that was really on our heart and it still is to this day is that we have a church full of of missionaries uh, and in i think particularly the the absence of programs and even being stuck at home um really highlighted that uh in in my thinking and is that as some of our our shared connections were broken down uh, our individual connections is where some of the best and most effective ministry opportunities lie and so we want to make sure we're doing everything we can to push each one towards increased knowledge of God's word, increased knowledge of God. Um, we want to encourage, make sure we're pushing each one um, towards spiritual disciplines, prayer, Bible reading, um, that we're all serving using our gifts. And that we're also all ministering. As we talked about on Sunday, that we're all ministering. That there's someone or maybe a couple of people that we are investing in, that we, we are praying and asking God to see them transform their lives. And that we're also part of that process. And so, we want to see that culture um, develop. So that's, those are pieces that regardless of how long it takes for everything to officially like open back up um, or whatever that looks like when it does, they say, we're going to be working on developing that culture um, and continue pushing down that to make it even to the individual level so that we're doing individual assessment and we're also doing individual, uh, uh, how do you say that nicely? Encouragement, I think is the word I'm looking for. Um, so uh so that's exciting. What else, what else can we be doing? I think that fight for unity is something that we cannot stop and we can't let up on. Now, this does not mean that we can't have our personal opinions. This does not mean that we can't have our personal political parties. It doesn't mean that we can't have our personal and in individual health assessments and what we need to do. Um, what it does mean is that Jesus is more important than all of those. And so that we can hold, we can even hold to our personal perspective pretty firmly um, but we should never do so in a way that diminishes the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we should never do it in a way that is, um, that says my personal perspective and opinions are more important than, than what Jesus has called us to. And so Jesus has called us to be a unique and diverse and a uh, family. And sometimes it's so annoying because it'd be, it's just easier. There's less friction if we hang out with people who agree with us on everything. Um, if you can find one of those people, you'd be actually, it's probably pretty amazing, but we have the opportunity in this moment, in this time to be the church. And, um, it's going to be a struggle and it already has been a struggle. And I'm so proud of so many that I hear, um, and observe showing grace and showing patience and demonstrating understanding. And you even hear someone says something that you don't agree with completely. And instead of, you know, telling them just what a horrible low down person they are. Um, there's, there's attempts to listen and to understand and to learn. And so that's something that we're going to need to continue to, to work for and to fight for. Um, we can't let up. We can't get tired of that fight. Um, because in the midst of that fight for unity is how we honor Christ. And that when, when the world, which is so divided, uh, looks at the church and says, wow, how do all those people get along? That the only answer is the spirit of God. Uh, administering the grace of God in our lives. So um, certainly what we are doing and what we all can be doing is fighting for unity uh, during this time. Um, we also could pray and work for opportunities. And we mentioned this earlier is that God is at work during this time. It's, it's amazing to see some of the things that God's been doing. And I hope you've been seeing that in your own life, but together. And then even as we have individual opportunities is that there is work to be done and we can pray that God gives us opportunities. He prays that, his, that he opens our eyes to those opportunities and then we can get busy doing it. And so there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of people that need Jesus. Um, there's a lot of people whose security uh, structures and, and safety blankets have been shattered during this time. And um, I'm excited for what God has uh, for us ahead. And there are opportunities. There will continue to be opportunities. And I think the longer this goes, the more opportunities there will be. And so God's put us here in a very special place in a very special time with a very special purpose um, to be his church. And so we're excited to do that um, together. Uh, what's the future? Um, so the next update, we, we uh, hadn't had a format for um, online uh, updates or business meetings. And as, as the, the days turn into weeks, turn into months, um, you know, I think it really is essential to stay connected even on some of these business pieces. And we struggled to kind of envision it on a, on a public service or, you know, announcing some of this in the parking lot. Um, so I think this is, it's not um, as ideal as seeing all your beautiful faces, but it is uh, the next um, 
I think it's the next best thing at this point in time. And we can record this. Um, and so that those who can't make it tonight still have the opportunity to see it and obviously ask questions. Um, one quote that I've been thinking about quite a bit is the, that the future is as bright as the promises of God. And I, I just love that. Uh, it's from Adoniram Judson. He was uh, what you'd call a fairly unsuccessful missionary. Um, and and I, I say that in human terms, that uh, he was seven years um, ministering um, in the area of Burma before um, the first person came to Jesus. So if you can imagine that, you're just at seven years, I believe, slugging it out um, in an unhospitable climate with nobody um, really responding to the gospel. And this quote, and there's maybe a, there's, a, there's also a paraphrase, a different way of uh, saying this is some, but this idea is that, you know, he said that the future is as bright as the promises of God. And boy, I, I, th I think that, and I believe that as a church family, um, I'm excited about what God has for us. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, we've gone back to many times during this is that the good news is that nobody cares more about the church than Jesus. And so while we have cares and we have concerns and we, we want um, to see it succeed and to grow and to reach people and to minister and to, to be the light, um, we can rest assured that nobody wants that more than Jesus. And no one is given more to make that happen. happen. And um, no one will provide the resources more than, than Jesus will. So um, certainly we want to steward it well. Uh, we want to work hard. Um, we want to do our best, but at the end of the day, um, God, it's God's church. And so we fully acknowledge that we fully celebrate, celebrate that. Um, and we we're thrilled to see those God as is impacted in a positive way during this time. Um, we may sorrow a little bit for those that, uh, that, uh, we love dearly and that are moving to a different location. Um, we sorrow in a different way, uh, for those that are, are, are caught, um, or been shaken, uh, during this time. But, but our confidence isn't in uh, our abilities or our facility or um, cer certainly even, you know, you know, the communication, uh, my communication abilities over Zoom. Um, but we are thrilled that uh, this is God's church, it's God's work, and we get to be a part of that. And so I, I, I want to thank you. Um, I want to thank uh, a lot of people for the, the patience you've exhibited during this time. Um, we have had, um, you know, it, it feels like every week's been a little bit different. Um, I also would fully admit that our normal, you know, a normal method of achieving or acquiring wisdom is to ask, ask those that have been ahead of you and that have wisdom. And certainly we're still in communication with a lot of pastors, um, but they're all trying to figure it out in, uh, in, in the very same way that we are. And so um, in some ways that's nice. It's encouraging in some ways. Well, it'd be a little handier if they, uh, they were, um, uh, a little bit, uh, uh, you know, someone would said, Hey, I did Corona three years ago and here's exactly what we did and exactly, uh, how God worked through that. So, um, but we're excited. Um, I want to thank you for, um, I want to thank you, um, uh, for, for joining us here. I've got a couple questions coming in. Uh, one question here is, can you expand on the pastoral team and advisory council plans? Um, how many on each? So uh, there's no, um, I'd say there's no fixed goal on exactly how many on the pastoral team and how many on the advisory team. Um, the pastoral team to date has been Justin and myself. Certainly we're wanting it uh, larger than that. I think that was part of the feed. That's part of the feedback from the align process. Um, you know, we would see that maybe over the next year or two, God would continue to build that out. Um, I would anticipate starting out somewhere. I would like to see four to five on pastoral team and probably similar on the advisory council. Um, but, um, you know, that depends on, um, you know, obviously qualifications need to be met. It depends on the people that God uh, has available. Um, it also depends on people saying yes. So, um, so there's, uh, you know, and, and we're not going to, you know, try to force it. Um, but I would, I would, you know, I'd like to think that um, we would have probably at least four, you know, at least three and four, um, three on the pastoral team, four on the advisory council um, to start with. But then we would look towards towards building, continue to build that out over the next um, year or two as God uh, leads. So, great question.
Uh, any other questions here? Oh. Okay, uh, so we are, I'm just gonna read this out loud. I don't know if anyone can see it or not just me, but we are in a new abnormal. That's a great way of putting that. <laughs> so how are we doing, how are we doing to create flexible and adaptable program programmatic elements to meet our current and future needs? Um, one of the things that I've really uh, loved, there is, um, there's no perfect answer during this time, but I've really enjoyed the hybrid service. Um, part of that is the suntan I get during uh, this. No, I was just kidding. Um, part of that is I, I, where we are a church of different ages and different backgrounds and different concerns and um, different perspectives. Um, I think inherent in the hybrid service is flexibility and and the ability to monitor and make um, decisions according to, to your own preference um, or own understanding or own convictions, however you want to say that. So, um, you know, if someone wants to be sitting outside in the seating area, they can do that as long as they stay distanced. Um, if someone you know, has greater concern, um, and they want to stay in their car with the windows rolled up and not talk directly to anyone, um, you know, without the glass there, they're also welcome to do that. Um, you know, the horn still works, so we're good there. Uh, if someone, you know, says, yeah, I'm not even really comfortable being out that much and they want to stay uh, at their house. Um, you know, that's, um, that gives a lot of flexibility. So for the Sunday service piece, um, I think that's, um, you know, is it a perfect answer? Like, no. Um, does it, is it an answer that I think allows us to minister across the broad, uh, maybe a broader spectrum of the church? Um, I, th I think so. Uh, so certainly that's one piece that, um, you know, I think it, we've allowed and we've, it's a, it's been a solution that allows people to be flexible and still participate. They can choose and, and make those decisions in their, in their own, um, in their own way and to their own understanding. So, um, so that's uh, one way. Um, with life groups, we've had some that are um, in person, some that are in Zoom meetings. Um, I think those kind of um, gatherings are going to be still important. Um, I don't think we're going to eliminate one or the other. Um, some people think Zoom is the greatest thing. You were so excited to get on tonight. Um, and, uh, and others of you are like, another zoom meeting, I'm going to kill myself. And so, um, so, you know, we understand that there are a variety of, of pieces there. Um, one of the ones that we're still wrestling with, and we've got some, you know, we've got some meetings planned to just talk to different parents is the grace kids piece. Um, certainly our kids ministry was robust and, um, even as a parent, I love to have, love, uh, having, um, my kids taught on, on their level. And, um, the challenge is with that is, you know, how do you, how do you keep kids uh, safe? I and mean, we're going through the same challenges the school system are looking at. So if you've, you know, you talk to some teachers and you talk about the options they're going through, uh, that'll give you a really good idea of some of the, uh, the struggles that we're looking at. And so how do we, how do we, um, keep people safe? How do we keep our kids safe? And also how do we, more importantly, maybe even how do we help them see and love Jesus during this time and show that it's still important. So, um, you know, we're working on, um, some grace kids options, we, you know, with outdoor. Um, and I gotta just say like the weather this year for the hybrid service has been amazing. I think last year it rained like every Sunday for 59 weeks. And this, this year, like we have not had a single week of rain. Now I'm going to, yeah, I'll be uh, on vacation with the family this week. So pastor Justin, if something happens this week, you know, I'm sorry. And you know, you're bad. Um, but, uh, but uh, we're, we're excited to see, um, to, you know, to, to try to adapt and to, to um, continue to, to work on that. Um, supporting our families has been, has been challenging and particularly when all this kicked off, um, you know, we had so many families that were overwhelmed with, um, we have so many families that are overwhelmed with, um, you know, transitioning, doing schooling at home. And I know a lot of our teachers were, you know, killing it and they were trying to transition too. So um, it's just, that was a big transition for everyone. And so 
uh, we found that or particularly early on a lot of our um, a lot of our, our our parents were really just trying to keep life together as many of us were as well and so um, ministering to our kids has been uh, um, you know a, a piece that we're still working on I don't think we've cracked that nut uh, quite as well as we like but um, you know we're, we know what we're trying to accomplish just the how-to is is uh, evolving so um, let's see uh, any uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not take this order. I'll come back to you, Rick. I'm not, I'm not ignoring you here. Um, but this one is uh, maybe s- similar to that. So um, as we evolve the pastoral team, is there a plan for a full-time pastor? Um, so one of the pieces that we're looking at, well, I guess this kind of falls into where Rick's question is the financial requirements next 12, 24 months. Um, so we are trying, we're, we're excited to see what God's done. We're trying to also be cost conscious in um, the midst of all this. So there might be other times, like if this was, if our budget was there where we were at and we were in more uh, normal times, sometimes you, you hire or bring on someone full time. Um, one of the recommendations that came out, you know, fairly re- repeatedly was even someone on that, um, like an executive pastor or a full-time business manager, you know, hybrid, um, you know, that came out through the align process. Um, I, you know, I think that's a, a fantastic idea. I don't see that as a negative in any sense. Um, you know, I think timeline on something like that, um, we were pretty interested in it, but I think at this point in time, we also don't want to see any really big uh, spikes in finances. And yes, we're grateful that we have some reserves in place. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know that we feel like we're close enough to the end to figure out how things will even shake out. So we kind of have maybe hit some good norms where we're at right now. But as far as the budget for something like a full time uh, pastor, um, I think we're, we're interested, uh, but uh, we're not um, quite ready to make that leap at this point in time, just due to the budget pieces. Um, if I don't fully answer any of these, feel free to follow up on a question. I'm just bouncing back and forth here. I apologize a little bit. Uh, any large financial requirements in the next uh, 12 to 24 months? Um, based on what we can see, and we haven't talked with the the town about this, um, but at least on our timeline, you know, uh, connecting the sprinkler system, we had a two year um, window on that. Um, I don't know if you know COVID's changed any of that for the town. Um, but it's something that, you know, doesn't get cheaper as time goes on. So we'll be looking to schedule that and get that piece, um, taken care of. Um, other than that, we're trying to avoid any large financial requirements. So, um, you know, just not because we're afraid to spend as necessary, but we just don't, it'll, we're not, I'm not sure what the long-term shakeout of this is. So, um, you know, we're trying to be efficient and, um, you know, avoid the long t- the, any large financial requirements that we don't have to make um, at this time. Uh, let's see. Any other questions here? I've got my questions on sp- the size of the upper screen, so that's why I look like I'm watching tennis. Any comments? Any uh, anyone watching us a solo? Oh, uh, I do have another question here. Um, regarding the fight for unity, does this include Dolphins fans? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I guess we got to fight to be unified even with Dolphins fans. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, sorry, Mike. Apologize. Uh, that's, that, that, that's the answer there. Any other, uh, any other uh, parking lot? Um, Let's see. Someone just said parking lot. I don't know what that means. Is that a question? Fixing the parking lot up by the garage. Oh yes. Yes. That's a, so we've been, we've been working. Uh, it's been really challenging to get quotes up that. So I don't, we don't really know what happened. It looks like some monster truck, like crushed some of that uh, pavement up there. Um, so yeah, we are working on, on getting quotes on that. We just, all the people that are supposed to showed up and get it have not done that. So um, but yes, we do need to get that parking lot fixed up by the garage. Um, 
any other any other questions i really would rather see your face i mean i'm just like looking at my face in all these little windows so um um beautiful thanks so much for the meeting good information um if you think of anything so we will be publishing this so um um it'll i'm not sure if it'll go out i think it'll go out an email um but if there's any piece that obviously later on you know you say hey i got thinking about this um certainly um you know we want to you know i think this format hopefully worked well enough it seems like a couple of you seem said it worked okay enough that uh, that it was manageable so uh, we look forward to kind of um at least trying to stay on something like this on the more business side of it on a uh, monthly basis and uh keep connected as a church family on these details as well and um i'm excited to um you know, to minister with you so i it's truly it's truly been a joy and a pleasure um yeah i'm so thankful for you guys so uh we love you um we're excited what God's going to do. And, uh, I, um, I'm grateful to be in this church. So, um, I guess, uh, Oh, let's see. Ken knows what happened to the parking lot years ago. A beer truck fell through the septic tank. <laughs> That's fantastic. I thought it was a little further forward, but apparently another beer truck fell through the septic tank again. <laughs> Okay. Well, there's no better way to end than a beer truck falling through a septic tank. So if you can just picture that and, uh, you know, so God bless you guys. Uh, love you. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to reach out and, um, you know, we, uh, we care for y'all. Uh, take care.